Hello, welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Dr. David Miller Jones. I'm going to talk about calcium channel blockers, in particular, the common side effect that we see in primary care of ankle swelling, edema, and calcium channel blockers. This has recently been a publication from the UK Medicines Information Pharmacists for NHS Care Professionals looking at this condition in particular. The background of peripheral edema with calcium channel blockers shows that it is a very common adverse effect. It is not related to fluid retention or fluid overload, but is actually due to increase in capillary pressure, causing leakage of fluid into the interstitial compartment. If we come across patients who have got ankle swelling and on calcium channel blockers, it's important to rule out other causes first. Different calcium channel blockers have different instances of ankle edema. If we look at the two broad classes of calcium channel blockers, there's the dihydropyridine group, the nifedipine and lodipine flodipine, the cytopine and locanidipine, and the non-dihydropyridine group, rapamil and diltiazem. Essentially, they all can cause ankle swelling, but ankle swelling is more likely in the DHB, the former group, up to 35% compared to 14% in the non-DHB group. Some DHB therapies, such as lecanopine and lecidipine, because of some lipophilic binding, may have less ankle edema association. The swelling is dose dependent. It doesn't normally start straight away. It is unlikely to be transient and it is unlikely to be self-limiting. So it is important to counsel the patients appropriately. So you might ask, why are we using the DHB calcium channel blockers if the non-DHB calcium channel blockers, Vrapamil and Ortizem, are less likely to cause edema. Well, the latter group have a more anotrophic action and affect cardiac conduction. In essence, they can cause problems with heart function and should be used with caution in patients with heart failure and those who are on medications that can alter cardiac rate, such as digoxin or beta blockers. So commonly we will be prescribing calcium channel blockers for angina, or if we're following the hypertension guidelines, prescribing calcium channel blockers as our first line in all patients aged over 55, unless they have diabetes. So the management of the edema obviously depends upon severity and comorbidities. It's important to remember it is really serious, but it can be troublesome and as a consequence, reduce medical medication compliance. Non-pharmacoceutical options have been considered, such as elevation of the legs and graduated support stockings. Unfortunately, these have poor compliance and no long-term efficacy. The obvious pharmaceutical method would be dose adjustment trying a smaller dose or trying on a different calcium channel blocker that is less likely to be causing edema. A useful um, clue can be using these therapies at night time. There have been some studies that nocturnal taking of these therapies causes less problems with fluid retention. Whenever I see patients who've got ankle edema, my first line treatment often is using a diuretic. 
the studies looking at both thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics have shown that there is no benefit. All they do is reduce fluid retention. But as I've already alluded, calcium channel blockers cause edema of the ankles because of local vasodilatory action. Other therapies with calcium channel blockers may offer some benefit. There have been trials that have shown that use of ACE inhibition and angiotensin renal blockers can reduce fluid. One trial looking at amlodipine and ramipril showed that when used in combination, the instance of edema was reduced to 7.8%, while amlodipine by itself was associated with 18.7% of edema. The mechanism of this is unknown. It's probably due to dilation of the venous capacitance vessels, reducing the capillary pressure and therefore reducing leakage. There has been a systematic review looking at all calcium channel blockers with different ACE inhibitors and angiotensin renin blockers. And this review found that used in combination there was a 38% reduction in leg swelling. Another option would be to consider nitrate therapy, in particular those patients that were using calcium channel blockade when they have angina. Nitrates have an action of venodilating. So as a consequence, they may have a benefit in reducing dependent edema. They are limited by the stop-start regimen because of tolerance. So when we see our patients who are on calcium channel blockers because of angina or hypertension, and they are complaining of significant and troublesome swelling of the ankles, we have got some options. We could look at the non-pharmaceutical options by leg elevation and graduated bandaging. We could try dose adjustment, either reducing the dosing or trying an alternative calcium channel blocker. The addition of ACE inhibition or a nitrate may also offer some resolution in the swelling. Important to remember, diuretics have no role to play unless there is another cause for fluid retention. The final option is if the patient is not tolerating the calcium channel blocker, is to discontinue it and think other therapies for angina or blood pressure management. Thank you for listening. Thank you.